Hello Year 10. Today's lesson is the third of our four lessons on the reading section of English Language Paper 1, the last of our online tutorials on this topic. I'm Miss Crump and I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to help you develop your skills again today. For today's lesson, you will need your workbook, a pen and highlighters if you have them. And don't forget to mute your social media notifications so you can really concentrate. If you need to, press pause while you get your things and when you're ready, press play to move on. I'd now like you to work through your do now. Again, remember it only helps drive the information into your long term memory if you try to do it without looking back at your notes. Press pause, answer as much as you can and then when you're ready, press play to move on. Evaluation means to examine critically and make a judgment, which was C. The three skills that the structure and language question have in common are to include quotations and examples, to comment on the effect on the reader and to include terminology. A picture created with words is imagery and metaphor and simile are the two types of imagery for questions four and five. If you didn't get all of these right, don't forget, you can find everything you need to know in your Writer's Methods Knowledge Organiser and you need to make sure you learn this carefully. Today, we're going to be focusing on question four and our objectives are to understand the process of evaluation, to practice preparing an evaluation and to know what makes a good answer to question four. In question four, you're being asked to evaluate. This means to make a judgment, literally to weigh up the different bits of something, put them back together and give the thing a value. You will be asked how far you agree with a statement that's been made about a text. The mark scheme will assess you on four skills. How well you answer the question, make a claim and back it up with evidence, how well you comment on the effects of the text on the reader, how well you comment on language and structure, and how well you include quotations. Evaluation is a complex skill. You need to decide what criteria you are going to use to make your judgment. What bits are there to weigh up? In this case, what is there in the statement and follow up question to agree with or to disagree with? There are four steps we need to go through. First, we need to formulate a series of questions based on the task. Second, examine the text and find answers to those questions, evidence. Third, evaluate the evidence, weigh up the evidence and make your judgments. And finally, Justify your views by making clear claims and supporting them with evidence. We're going to start by formulating our questions, our criteria for our evaluation. Read the question carefully and write a series of questions that you need to answer to make your judgment. Press pause, complete activity two and press play when you're ready to move on. So let's look at this together. I'm being asked to what extent I agree with the student statement. So what is there to agree or disagree with? A student having read this section of the text said, this part of the text explaining what Hale is doing shows how nervous and unsafe he feels. Well, is he nervous? Does he feel unsafe? And as in the second bullet point, what is the writer doing to make him seem nervous and unsafe? Is there evidence that he feels anything other than nervous and unsafe? It reminds me of the first line. Does this section remind me of the first line? Why? Why might the writer have reminded me of the first line in this way? Now it's time to examine the text to find answers to our questions. 
To save you some time today and to help with the next part of the lesson, I've already selected some evidence to help with this and numbered it with the question numbers from the last slide. But you might, of course, find different evidence to suit these or your own questions too. Press pause, complete activity three, and then press play to move on. So for question one in yellow, is he nervous? Yes, drinking alcohol hastily in the morning. Number two, in blue, does he feel unsafe? Well, yes, it says so. And the repetition of the idea of a challenge is a reminder of this tension. He's caught between needing to be found out, but also needing to avoid his enemies who we know want to murder him. Three, which is green. What is the writer doing to make him seem nervous and unsafe? Besides what we've already mentioned, I've noticed that there seems to be some imagery related to death and evil, ghost, skeleton, and the words uncoiled and twisted, which remind me of a snake. Reinforcing the sense that he feels constantly under threat. Question four in purple, is there evidence that he feels anything other than nervous and unsafe? Well, yes, he also seems bitter. He resents the holidaymakers and suggests that their joy is a pretense and futile or pointless. Number five in pink, does this section remind me of the first line and why? Yes, repetition creates a cyclical structure. And six, circularity may suggest that there's no escape for him. Also reinforces the tension for the reader. Now we need to look at our evidence and see what it tells us. In what ways do we now agree or disagree with the statement? Or do we think there may be other ways to look at the text that the statement doesn't cover? Press pause, review the statement and evidence, tick one box and then press play to move on. So I definitely agree that he is nervous. He feels unsafe and this part of the text reminds me of the beginning. I think there's evidence that he also feels bitter and resentful, which is not quite the same thing as the question suggests. So I'm going to select I mostly agree. You may have come to different conclusions and that's fine. Just make sure you've got evidence to support your views. We're now going to plan our answer, making sure that we focus on the first skill, make a claim and back it up with evidence. First, group your points into arguments for and against, or slightly different from, the statement. This is what mine looks like. Then make some notes in your planning box indicating the evidence you will use for each of your points. Press pause, complete activity five, and then press play to move on. Before we begin to write, let's look at a student example. First, identify exactly where they have met the skills in the checklist, and then give them some feedback on their strengths and weaknesses. Press pause, complete the task, and then press play to move on. You can see here where the student has met the criteria. Clearly, in yellow, they've answered the question, made the claim that they agree with the statement, explained how, in that I also feel that, and then said why, by giving evidence in blue, and then evaluating how it shows that the statement is correct. In this way, I feel the writer is successful. The effect on the reader is pointed out clearly in purple, but this candidate also shows their understanding of effects throughout the text, throughout the answer, when they are commenting on the writer's methods in green. And note they're using terminology such as irony to demonstrate their understanding. There are carefully chosen quotations in blue throughout. For your final task today, 
I'd like you to use your notes from the lesson to write your own full answer to the evaluation. Remember, it's worth more than the total marks for questions two and three, so make it as detailed as you can. Next lesson, there's no YouTube tutorial. Instead, spend the whole hour typing or writing up your answer and remember to submit it to your teacher by the deadline. And I will see you again next week to begin our work on poetry.